What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Commodity. I'm Fez and today we are taking a look at 13 day road trip through Western Australia's Southwest Edge, Perth to Experience? Experience? Okay, so I, I've never heard of Experience. Uh, but yeah, this was suggested in my Discord by Chummy Water Bear. It said, I hope you can make it to Western Australia. There's something about Western Australia I'm drawn to. Um, I think it just reminds me a lot of where I'm from, Texas. Um, a lot of, you know, it's huge. It makes Texas look baby, but it's got water. It's got, uh, like, I like the idea of being able to take something uh, to go off-roading and go either mudding or just, I, I'm more of an off-roader. I don't really care for mudding. That's just a headache. You have to clean up afterwards. Um, I like the idea of the water. I like the idea of the fact that there's a city. I like the idea that there's just pretty much everything that you would truly want to do. So let's go ahead and jump into this. If you want to suggest videos, link to the Discord will be down in the description. If you want to get me to Australia, link to the GoFundMe will be down in the description. And if you've already helped, thank you. If you can't, I still love you. Um, but if you want to help out, hit the like button. That will get this video out to more people. And if you are constantly coming back, let me actually pull this up real quick. I don't know if I have one pulled up. Currently, people, let me go to my analytics, uh, audience. I've got almost 80% of my viewers are not subscribed. So if you want to help out, go ahead and subscribe. That would mean the world to me. Ladies, I need some more representation. You're only 25% of my viewership, so help me out. Australia is my number one uh, country of viewership, so yay to that. But guys, let's go ahead and jump into this. Take a journey of discovery into the southwest edge with an epic 12-day adventure from Perth to Esperance. This exciting road trip will showcase the best of Western Australia's southwest region, from towering forests to marine life rich coasts and world class wine regions. I do like wineries. I'm not a big drinker, but I do like wineries, and I will drink wine. Departing Perth, take a short ferry ride from Fremantle to Rottnest Island and arrive at the sweeping white sands of Thompson Bay. Visit Thompson Bay Settlement where you can grab coffee or lunch, then explore the rest of the car-free island at your own pace. Meet the world's cutest Aww. marsupials, the quokkas, and enjoy Rotness beautiful marine So life. freaking cute! <sighs> Holy crap. We gotta go back to that. Oh my gosh. Quokkas. It's like they know and they're posing. Enjoy Rotness beautiful. Look at that thing! He's so cute. Beautiful marine life. End the day on a rotness seafood tour before taking the ferry back to Fremantle. You got me. Enjoy breakfast in Fremantle before browsing the local boutiques for unique and vintage finds. Visit the Fremantle Roundhouse, the oldest public building in WA, and originally built as a prison for settlers in the Swan River Colony. That's fun. If you like seafood, head for lunch at the Fremantle Fishing Boat Harbour before driving towards Bunbury. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know y'all are going to hate head me. Lunch oh my gosh. The Swan River Colony. If you like seafood... Look at that. We got some crab. Are those regular crab or soft shell? They kind of look like they've got them cooked like they're soft shell. And I love clams. Oyster, clams, anything really. Look at that. You even have clams down here. You got me sold just with that. Now, if that costs, if this costs $30, $40, that's a little hard sell for me. But at the same time, I mean, damn, damn. And then you got some French fries over here. Mm. You can tell, I don't know if you can see the way I have it set up, but back there, I just had some ribs, some pork ribs. So this is like right up. Oh my gosh. I want some seafood so bad. 
head for lunch at the Fremantle Fishing Boat Harbour before driving towards Bunbury, which is two hours south. You'll pass through the rolling hills of the Ferguson Valley. Oh, beautiful. Make sure to stop at Wellington Forest National Park where you can go for a hike or a bike ride to the spectacular Black Diamond Lake. That's an interesting choice of attire to ride bikes in. Stop at Bunbury Wildlife Park to meet a range of Australian marsupials, birds and reptiles. Once you arrive at Bunbury, take in the vibrant street art, shop the boutiques and purchase fresh local produce before spending the evening at Bunbury Seaview Apartments or Discovery Parks Bunbury. Start your morning at the Dolphin Discovery Centre, where you can interact with the friendly wild dolphins. Stretch your legs in Bustleton and take some time to relax on the white sandy beach before a 40 minute drive to Yallingup. When you reach Yallingup, you can spend the afternoon exploring its sensational coastal spots like the Canal Rocks and head to Indyup Natural Spa Retreat for in villa <laughs> dining and spa treatments. I always catch myself doing stupid crap watching videos. Uh, let's see here, let's go back to where they were. All right, right around here. The Canal Rocks and head to Indyup Natural. Like I saw this and I start looking, like you can watch it, go back and I'll start doing this. I'll, I'll kind of just perch up a little bit, hoping to be able to see over this just to see what I'm looking at. Like a moron. I don't have a fancy screen that lets me see things beyond what the camera catches. Spa retreat for in villa dining, spa treatments, and relaxation. Oh, I could get into that. L legitimately. Literally. Today is all about exploring the magnificent Margaret River wine region. Just a 35 minute drive from Yelling Up, Margaret River is a heaven for wine lovers, with 150 wineries that produce more than 20% of Australia's premium wine. So this would be more like an opportunity for the adults. I went to, we went to uh, the wine country up in Northern California uh, when I was a kid. And it was, I mean, it was really cool because you're not far from the redwoods and all that stuff, but there's something lacking, like the tasting and all that kind of stuff is a big part of enjoying uh, going to these places, you know. After breakfast, your tour guide will pick you up for a day tour visiting world-class vineyards such as Lewin Estate, Voyager Estate, and Vass Felix. You'll then visit a range of gourmet producers along the way, where you can pick up some cheese, bread, biscuits and olives for a gourmet picnic. Spend the next two nights at the Smith's Beach Resort for the ultimate beachside experience. Have a drink at their brilliant wine bar, then dine in for dinner at the on-site restaurant with superb ocean views. Today we'll explore the other highlights. There's not enough fishing in these. Like I want to go fishing. Like I want to go out. Not necessarily. I don't want to go like uh, what is it called? Like tuna fishing or uh, um, um, what's the big one? Um, I can't even think of what it's called. But I don't want to do like exotic fish. I just want to go fishing. I want to do ocean fishing. We don't. I don't get to do that. So I would love to do some ocean ocean fishing. Lights of the Margaret River region. Take a short drive up north to explore. Even if I don't catch anything, I'd want to do it. Neilgi Cave. You will learn about the world's oldest living culture and get to experience a live didgeridoo performance. Drive 43 kilometers west of Margaret River to watch the professional surfers at Surfers Point, or take a short drive south to the casual beachside dining place White Elephant Cafe. Other activities that you can do include taking a stand-up paddleboard lesson, rock climbing, abseiling, or kayaking along the Margaret River. From Margaret River, take a 40-minute drive south towards Augusta and jump on a two-hour whale-watching tour to spot some humpback whales. I've actually learned something recently about humpback whales that they actually hate orcas and how they beat up on animals. So, or they will hang around humans just to protect them from 
orcas. But I've also seen that orcas have kind of uh, helped out humans. Like they'll they'll come around and play with them a little bit and not actually try to attack them. So it's really interesting what uh, I feel like they're evolving. I don't know. Call me crazy. Go for a scenic drive into the forest around Pemberton and hit the mountain bike trails or hike a section of the Bibbleman track and admire the Beetle Up Falls. Test your fear of heights at the 58 nope. meter tall Gloucester tree and nope. climb the makeshift ladder to the top. I'm good. Drive along the eye-catching coastal scenery towards William Bay National Park, where you will find the giant granite boulders of Elephant Rocks. That I could and do. The turquoise clear waters of Greens Pool. 100% I could do. Stop by for lunch at a local destination icon, Denmark Good Food Factory. It is the perfect place to enjoy a cider in the garden, meet new people, and taste one of the best burgers in the West. Check into the peaceful Ayana Retreat, just a 45 minute drive from Denmark's centre. The villas are surrounded by native flora and it's close to the Wilson Inlet. Next stop, Albany, where you will find farmers markets, fresh oysters and some of the most pristine beaches. Visit the striking coast at the Gap, a natural bridge. The granite wow. cliff has a natural gap with I a think I could do that. skywalk platform that extends out 10 metres over the cliff's edge and the pounding waves below. I think I could do that. I think I would be nervous and I'd be gripping really tight. And if anybody's hand is nearby, I'm going to like strangle the blood out of it. It's going to like spurt out the ends. But I think I could handle that. Other activities in Albany include exploring the Albany Heritage Park, whiskey tasting at the Lime Burners Distillery, and a visit to the nearby Australian Wildlife Park, where you'll see kangaroos, bandicoots, and wombats. End the night with Vietnamese French inspired cuisine at Liberté at the London and stay at the Hilton Garden in Albany. On the way to Bremer Bay, head to the Parongarup National Park. Located here is the Granite Skywalk, a suspended walkway that rises 670 metres above sea level. If you are a wildflower enthusiast, bird watcher, or hiker, you can continue onwards to Stirling Range National Park where you can climb one of Western Australia's highest peaks, Bluff Knoll. Just a one and a half hour drive away, you'll reach the small seaside town of Bremer Bay. Spend the night at the Bremer Bay Resort, where the Mount Barron restaurant offers panoramic views across the bay. Departing Bremer Bay, the route will take you through the beautiful Fitzgerald River National Park, known for its unique wildflowers and fauna. Oh, Make your I would be Ravensburg all about that. Enjoy a wildflower festival tour to discover the wildflower hotspots in the area. I Next, love take flowers. Take a two and a half hour drive to the beautiful town of Esperance. I love flowers to look at. I hate to buy them. They're just a waste of money to me. Check in at Esperance Chalet Village, where you will stay for the next two nights. The Chalet Village is a charming and peaceful retreat, just a five minute stroll from the crystal clear waters of Esperance Bay. Once you've settled in, you can borrow one of the complimentary village bikes and head into town to grab a coffee and some supplies. Esperance has some of the world's most beautiful beaches, including Hellfire Bay, Blue Haven, and Twilight Beach, just to name a few. Spend the afternoon exploring them, Follow the coast to the Cape Le Grand National Park. Here you can go for a hike to Frenchman's Peak, where you will find carpets of wildflowers in spring, granite outcrops, and freshwater pools. Make sure to visit Lucky Bay, Australia's widest beach with its translucent water and white Look at sand. that. And keep a lookout for the inquisitive kangaroos that roam the shores. I want one. <laughs> Take a scenic tour with Heli Spirit Tours and witness the striking pink Lake Helia on Middle Island against the Blue Ocean. Heli Spirit will take you on a helicopter from the Esperance foreshore, showcasing the pristine coastline and the famed Pink Lake. Algae, right? 
I think. It's worth noting that Lake Hellier is the only pink lake in this region of Western Australia. There used to be a pink lake close to Esperance that could be accessed by car, but it is no longer a vivid pink colour. Head back to your chalet at 6pm to freshen up before enjoying some European-influenced cuisine at the Loose Goose Bar and Restaurant. That's what I want. I know it's crazy. Car, but it is no longer a vivid pink colour. Head back to your... That bathtub has got my name on it. It might not be visible. It might be on the backside, but it's got my name on it. I love baths. I love soaking. I love bubbles. I love adding the the bath bombs. I like adding, uh, what's it called? Like, uh, like my bathroom is loaded with things to add to a bath. I just, I don't know what it is. I used to drink a lot of whiskey back in the day. I don't really drink it. I don't drink at all anymore. In fact, I was enjoying the uh, devil's lettuce while taking baths and I've taken a break. I've been going good for probably about a month now, maybe three to four, uh, three weeks to four weeks now just to let my lungs take a break. But I enjoy just relaxing, getting a little enjoyment out of it. So I love that. Your chalet at 6 p.m. to freshen up before enjoying some European influenced cuisine at the Loose Goose Bar and Restaurant. Today is the last day of your trip and it's all about returning to Perth via Hyden or Kalgoorlie. It takes approximately eight hours to get to Perth from Esperance. If you decide to travel through Hyden, make sure you visit the impressive Wave Rock. You can oh, that's spend cool. the night at Wave Rock Hotel and continue your trip back to Perth the next day. Wave Rock was formed millions of years ago, measuring around 15 metres in height and more than 100 metres in width. This makes it the perfect end to your southwest edge adventure. Follow First Class Travel for more travel inspiration. I feel like if you followed this trip to a T, you're spending like, minus the trip out there, you're spending like $10,000. It seems so expensive. A helicopter ride? Yeah, that's probably only like $500, bucks, 300 dollars something like that. But it could easily be $2,000 depending on how long the trip is and all that kind of stuff. But it looks not cheap, but it looks very well worth it. Um, the goal from that first trip to Australia, wherever I may go, is to possibly make enough money from the videos to fund the second trip, if that makes sense. So that's going to be the big goal is we need to get these videos out. We need them to grow. So when I do go, these this the videos will be viewed by a lot of people. And then the goal is to adventure out beyond Australia, hit New Zealand, hit Southeast Asia, hit Asia altogether, hit Africa, hit Europe, hit South America, hit North America. I mean, there's a lot of great places here in the States that I haven't been. Um, there are places that my kid has beat me to, which is kind of embarrassing. I do want to go to South Dakota and go to Mount Rushmore. I want to see the Grand Canyon. I want to go to other places here in the States. I want to go to Yosemite and all that stuff. But the, the goal is to make enough to be able to fund other trips and possibly be able to pay my bills so I don't have to rely on anything else to pay them so I can travel and show the world to people that either don't have an opportunity to or to help people make decisions on how to spend their vacation. That's always the goal at the end of the day. Um, but guys, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did hit the like button, subscribe. If you want to suggest videos, link to the discord will be down in the description. If you want to help me get to Australia, link to my GoFundMe will be down in the description. And until next time, peace.